Hello and welcome to our conference today. I have with me another beautiful guest, um, Jenny Soto Banks, who is a beautiful school teacher. And I wanted to begin conference. We're studying why Ashtanga in the last few weeks we've been talking about the importance of surrounding ourselves with beauty and to um, one of the ways that we keep ourselves physically healthy, emotionally healthy, and energetically healthy is by connecting to nature. Like I was, we were saying that we were actually designed, our, our, the very fiber of our being um, connects and is nourished by being in the mountains, by looking at the ocean this morning, by seeing a hummingbird. Um, and, and so um, last week I just mentioned that one of my favorite books on the planet is Pilgrim at Tinker Creek by Annie Dillard. And the, actually one of the first chapters, it's very well worn, it's been all over the world and in many bathtubs. <laughs> and um, one of the first chapters, she is chapter two actually, is the chapter on seeing. And so I, I asked Jenny to come and read part of this chapter um, to go with our conference on beauty and how actually our lives are surrounded by beauty and sometimes we're just so busy and we talked about how sometimes our, there's so much noise in the world, there's so much noise in our head that we don't recognize the beauty that's around us when, we're, when that, all that noise is, is around. So um, anyway, let's have Jenny read to us, boys and girls. Okay. When I was six or seven years old, growing up in Pittsburgh, I used to take a precious penny of my own and hide it for someone else to find. It was a curious compulsion Sadly, I've never been seized by it since. For some reason, I always hid the penny along the same stretch of sidewalk up the street. I would cradle it at the roots of a sycamore, say, or in a hole left by a chipped off piece of sidewalk. Then I would take a piece of chalk and starting at either end of the block, draw huge arrows leading up to the penny from both directions. After I learned to write, I labeled the arrows, surprise ahead or money this way. I was greatly excited during all this arrow drawing at the thought of the first lucky passerby who would receive in this way, regardless of merit, a free gift from the universe. But I never lurked about. I would go straight home and not give the matter another thought until some months later, I would be gripped again by the impulse to hide another penny. It is still the first week in January and I've got great plans. I've been thinking about seeing there are lots of things to see, unwrapped gifts and free surprises. The world is fairly studded and strewn with pennies cast broadside from a generous hand. But, and this is the point, who gets excited by a mere penny? If you follow one arrow, if you crouch motionless on a bank to watch a tremulous ripple thrill on the water and are rewarded by the sight of a muskrat kit paddling from its den, Will you count that sight a chip of copper only and go your rueful way? It is dire poverty indeed when a man is so malnourished and fatigued that he won't stoop to pick up a penny. But if you cultivate a healthy poverty and simplicity so that finding a penny will literally make your day, then since the world is in fact planted in pennies, you have with your poverty bought a lifetime of days. It is that simple. What you see is what you get. So ever since I've, I've read that so many years ago, um, I always pick up a penny. And I always say when I pick up the penny, find a penny, pick it up, all day you'll have good luck. But now the penny reminds me after this metaphor that she uses of, um, of po that pause again, that Viktor Frankl pause, um, that we, we stop for a moment to pick up the penny, but that we stop for a moment in our life to notice the hummingbird or to say, ah, the ocean's so beautiful today or the clouds in some weird shape. And um, because we can go to the mountains and we can go on vacation and go to these places that are beautiful because our soul needs it. Our soul needs that connection to nature. But the truth of it is, it's everywhere. And so I love this, this reading by Annie Dillard because I think like anything else, we practice, practice, practice in Ashtanga and we get better at focusing our mind. We get better at those spaces in between. We get better at listening to ourselves, And I think that um, 
we get better at seeing if we practice seeing because the truth of it is whatever you choose to see becomes your reality you know as, and we un we understand that but I, I think from all my years of doing psychology cognitive behavioral psychology um, yoga and intertwining spirituality and mysticism with that I think more than anything else I've just learned and have taught other people to um, to choose what it is that you want and then practice 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 so I wanted to read to you one more beautiful quote by John O'Donohue and to um, to talk about giving us all a little challenge here on how we see to practice seeing John said when we hear the word beauty, we inevitably think that beauty belongs in a special elite realm where only the extraordinary dwells. Yet without realizing it, each day, each one of us is visited by beauty. Yet beauty is so quietly woven throughout the ordinary days that we hardly notice it. Everywhere there is tenderness, care, and kindness, there is beauty. And I added, of course, one of my favorite quotes by Annie Dillard, um, I cannot cause light. The most I can do is put myself in the path of its beam. And that says the same thing to me, that, that beauty is all around us. And how often are we so malnourished with our busy heads and our busy lives that we don't take that pause to like really enjoy the hummingbird or really enjoy the tree that's in bloom or whatever is in, on our daily path or in our di daily life that surrounds us. So I had the class do um, a little bit of homework, but I knew that on Sunday we actually had a little girl that was here for conference. She was seven years old, and she was so enthusiastic about what we were talking about. And she was like, I had a hummingbird on my porch this morning, and, and I have roses on my porch. And she was all excited to share with us these things that just that morning she had seen. And so I knew that she would be excited about the homework I was going to give all the students, but I. I also knew that a lot of my students wouldn't be that interested or <laughs> excited about it. So I made everyone do a pinky promise. Did you do your homework? Yeah. Do you guys want to do a pinky promise to do your homework? Because <laughs> here's what happens when we're young, we're like, that's fun, that's exciting. And then when we become adults, we're like, that's stupid. <laughs> but the thing about this homework is it's so simple that you might think that it's kind of stupid. Um, but if you actually do it for 30 days, it really works. And I know it works because I not only do this stuff, but I have my folks do all these kind of weird things. So what's the homework? The homework is this. For 30 days, you're going to keep a beauty journal. What's a beauty journal? It's a blank book, or it could have stuff in it, I suppose. And you start with day one. And you're just like, it's like you're documenting beauty. So it's one thing to think it here and go, oh yeah, that hummingbird's beautiful. But we're like throwing down another case on into this homework that we're doing by actually writing it to say, I saw a beautiful hummingbird this morning. I had a monarch fly around my uh, Jeep. I um, stopped and paused to see how um, glassy the ocean waves were this morning. Um, last week's little bird that had like polka dots on it to, to speak it out loud and even like here's some bonus stuff too, like to say it out loud and I know this might sound silly but I'm, I guess I'm inviting you all to be silly a little bit to say to the hummingbird you're beautiful or to say to the little bird with the spotted belly like look at you you're so cool who dressed you this morning you're beautiful um, and then to write it in your journal at the end of the day, or I've been bringing mine with me throughout the day and just like writing different things. And what I found, I'm on day five right now. And what I found is I've started to notice different things that are beautiful to me that I wouldn't have noticed before. Already the homework is working on me because I'm of course doing my own homework. But I noticed like the sound of, um, somebody's voice the other day and I was like that's so beautiful to hear that and I wouldn't have said that in my own mind before like that's beautiful to hear your voice but because I'm doing this homework that's kind of how it works you start to scan your world for what's beautiful and things that normally you would have not even paid attention to now you're honing in on them and saying 
that's going in my journal today. That's actually quite beautiful. Rather than just the usual boring, oh, the ocean's so beautiful, oh, the tree that's in bloom is so beautiful, you start to just notice like the simplest crazy things that you wouldn't otherwise um, notice that get written in your journal, that get imprinted up here. And by the end of the 30 days, here's what's gonna happen. I'm hypnotizing everybody. So the real, the real goal behind this is, is what we talked about a couple weeks ago is love and happiness and joy. And, and so when you, you weave more beauty and more beauty into your life and you acknowledge how much beauty you have in your life and it winds up cultivating this thing called gratitude, this sense of gratitude. And it just brings us joy, it brings us happiness, it makes us happier people, more appreciative people. So by the end of this month, you're gonna be noticing more and more and more and more beauty and writing it down and writing it down. So what was maybe two things, now the next day is four or five, or different and unique things. And at the end of the month, what you'll find is that you just feel happier, that you live in a world that's filled with beauty and that your life is, the days of your life are surrounded with beauty. So you all made me a pinky promise that you're going to do the homework and, and practice seeing. So the idea in this is we're going to become better seers. As always, we take this yoga out of this room and into our life, and I honor each one of you for allowing me to give you goofy homework and to allow you to be silly with me for 30 days. Namaste.